What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I have Johnny Petragula Jr. here and he's going to be giving me a lesson. Now some of the best bowling I ever did coming right off that pandemic was when I was taking lessons with Johnny and we're going to get back to that. So if you guys like this video and you'd like to see more interactions between me and Johnny on the lanes, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, hit that notification bell. If you like this jersey, you can go to coolwick.com and use my promo code NAPOLIS10. That'll get you 10% off your entire order. And there should be a link down below in the description where you can order anything bowling related. It's a direct way to help support the channel to keep content like this happening. Okay, Johnny Petragula Jr. Yes, sir. What are we, <laughs> what are we doing today? Because I, I sent you a couple clips of my bowling and it hasn't been very pretty. And the comments back that up because they hate the way I throw the ball. So <laughs> what, what are we working on today? Well, it's, uh, it's been, I would say, at least two years since you and I actually worked together. So uh, I've actually had the pleasure of watching you as long as anybody that, that views all of your shows. But uh, recently, the one thing that I have noticed is um, we're going to base this off of one of Mark Baker's principles. Uh, one of the first pages in, in his book shows a variety of different pros, men, women, tall, short, righty, lefty all at the uh, the power step. In other words, the completion of the pivot step going into the slide step. And all of these top 10 bowlers that are recognized in that photo, names like Amleto Monticelli, Dave Houston, Carolyn Doran Ballard, they're all uh, parallel to the ground. They're all about shoulder height at the completion of their pivot step. And I personally think what's happened with your game is your swing has gotten a little bit steep. In other words, at the completion of your pivot step, I still see your swing going up. Now, there's a few exceptions to that rule, very few, like a Jason Couch, whose arm is still going up, and Jason Couch was just an anomaly. He figured out a way to have that super late timing with the swing and get it to work. And he had a pretty good career. He could say that again. <laughs> but um, what I'm noticing is a slight hesitation in the push away in the early going is creating the extra force through the impact zone at the top as you go into your pivot step. So what happens is now it takes away the completion of the swing going forward and it makes it come more downward into and the I, I do feel that i do feel that when i get to the top of the swing i'm almost like coming down instead of penduluming is that what you're referring to absolutely absolutely right. and that can be manipulated in a couple different ways and I'll, I'll try and do some experimentation today with you to maybe re-trigger something in your brain because there was a period where you didn't do that there was a period where my timing was really good and I was pretty solid at the line, 85% of the shots. Now it's lower than that. But what I, I like, we were talking before we, we came on camera, what I do like is I do like the way you're, the, the, the motion, I like the release, I like, I like the way the ball is traveling down the lane. It's a very predictable motion. We've got to figure out a way to tie those two things together and once we get through that, I think you're gonna be well Un on your way. Uncaged tiger. <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna turn the camera around and I'm gonna throw a couple shots with just the way I've been bowling the last couple of weeks so you guys can see. And then we'll start chatting on the lanes and seeing if we can turn me into a half decent bowler. All right, so this is my first couple of shots here. I'm in the Zen, just kind of the way I normally bowl, just to get loose here. It's funny, when the camera starts rolling, all of a sudden you just start throwing. Alright, so I'm going to throw another shot here, this time in the gym, kind of just to change things around a little bit. Alright, so as Lou gets up here, based off the things that we just discussed previously, I want you to notice two things here. Number one, the height of his backswing as he's going into that step. As you can see, it's still continuing to move upward as he's trying to get down into the foul line with the completion of his slide. The second thing that you'll notice is, I want you to watch the speed of his first step. As his ball gets into the swing, you'll notice a slight hesitation going into step number two, which also slows down the push away. So that slight hesitation and drag that's being created in the first to second step is also creating that super duper high screw into the lane peak at the top of the swing. All right, so two things to take notice here. Number one, ideally with the bowling game, again, I'm left-handed, so just mirror this if you're right-handed. As we're getting into our slide step, when our pivot step is here, our power step, we want this arm to be right here. Once it gets here, everything becomes too steep into the foul line. If it's too short, 
and it can also get away with that. You'd have to be more like a Marshall Holman and Adam Barta, somebody with super duper fast feet to compensate. Chad McLean. There you go. Lou doesn't have very fast feet. If anything, he has traditional footwork, maybe even slightly slower. So what's happening is two things that I wanna work on today as I just explained earlier. Number one, the slight hesitation in the push away after the speed of step number one going into step two is causing a change in the timing that's affecting the ball through the hit zone. So we e either have to do that or mentally imagine the backswing being shorter. Either one will work because just imagining the backswing peaking a little bit shorter will automatically speed up your feet because now your subconscious it's knows to get back in time. it's got to get back in time. And right now that's our main goal. Your release is beautiful. It's perfect, regardless of any comments. The, the, the release <laughs> at the bottom, I mean. Professional talking. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> the ball roll is very good. It's there. The spraying or the inconsistency of trajectory and launch angle is all coming from right here. So that's our goal today. We're going to keep it very simple because all of the main elements that you need are there. They've always been there. I think just through trials, tribulations, and the amount of work that you put in on the lanes, especially with everything you do, you kind of lose yourself sometimes. Yeah. And I think it's time that uh, we go ahead and fix that today. All right, so we're gonna try to lower that swing or get the hand moving faster? Yeah, the first thing I'm gonna try and do is I'm gonna ask you to just try and lower your swing. And what, I, what my dad used to do with me was, my dad would stand next to me and he'd say, John, you, your back swing is, is in outer space right now. And he would actually put his hand about shoulder level and I would hit it with, with, with the ball. And I would know, and I'd say, Dad, I feel like my, my backswing is here. Which, by the way, happy 75th birthday, Dad. I'll be Facebook Live with you later. The day we're filming is Johnny Petraglia Sr.'s birthday. Yes. And he's here with me, so. So what I want to start with here is I'm going to ask Lou to try and keep his backswing at the level of my hand. So I'll actually be in camera for one or two shots because I just want to start out here and then we'll get to the first two steps and see where we go from there. All right, let's do it. All right, so I'm going to make an effort to bring my swing lower and the goal is to stay under your arm wherever you, uh, wherever you put it. Or barely touch it. Or barely touch it, okay. Oh, I felt it, yeah, okay. But not horrific. It wasn't, it wasn't as bad as you think. It's actually still slightly lower than it was even in your first practice shots. Okay, yeah, because I, I was also trying to make an effort to bring my swing down. All right, so we're back on the lanes, and the attempt here is to lower it further than the last one. And I've even lowered my hand to make it even harder. All right, here, here we go. Not bad at oh, all. Oh, wow. That was actually better than the last one. Yeah, okay, I, I know I guttered, but my timing felt really good right? for like the first time in a long time. So now let's see it without me actually touching you this time. Okay. I, I'll, let, I'll leave my hand there so you subconsciously are like, okay, I know John's hand is there, but let's see you do it without me inhibiting your swing by, by hitting you okay. at the top of it. All right, so now I'm gonna try to do it without the swing aid, but Johnny's still gonna be there. Low back swing, Chad McLean style. getting there you're getting there yeah absolutely it's still I'll say this it's still continuing up but again we're only three shots in yeah so it feels already way lower and more than the feel everything because it's crazy how the brain works I'm thinking lower backswing and then everything kind of slows down into tempo and it's it, like it already feels a, a million better it already looks a million better so I want you to really try and focus on it again. And this time, add one element. Because what I did notice is, as you just said, when it was continuing to go up, that hinge would kind of open and break a little bit. Really try everything in your willpower to not only keep the backswing a little bit shorter, but stay loaded. Stay almost like a Chris Barnes. All right, so for on this shot here, like Johnny said, I'm gonna try to keep that lower backswing and stay loaded throughout and see what this looks like. Oh, God. See, th that goes back to what I was saying, that when I stay loaded, like, it feels so much pressure here and here, and I kind of just, like, end up like... Okay, then let's drop that for now. Let's, let's forget about the super load for right now. Unless... How, did, how did you think that looked, though? 
I didn't like it. Yeah. I didn't like it as much. Uh, the, the swing was still high. So right now, I think maybe adding that element is the incorrect thing to do. All right, so we're actually going to try something that I haven't done in a couple years, more than that. We're going to do four steps and the lower back swing with Johnny here. So let's see how this looks. Best shot of the day. It was slow. Best shot of the day. But the timing, let's look at that on camera. Yep. I got it. All right, for reference here, guys, that was the first time I did four steps in maybe six years. So we're going to try that again. Nope, nope, nope. That was going to be five steps. Excellent. That's so funny. I was like, I was like, oh, nope, nope, wrong foot. <laughs> All right, so this is gonna be my four-step approach without Johnny on the lanes to see. And I might be doing this for a little while, even in a couple videos. So let me know how this looks here. How did that one feel? Felt good. All right, so we're trying it again. Oh, let me move up. Four-step approach, I'm just really trying to Lower the backswing, but my timing from that last shot, guys, was A1. Let's try this again. Oh. Now, while all of, while everybody is listening, I want to let you in on something that I'm doing. Here, come back here. I have lowered my hand each and every time. So the reason oh, you, have you? Yes, okay. the reason you keep hitting my hand is I keep lowering my hand. Okay. The second thing was earlier at the top of the show, we were talking about the hesitation in steps one to two, along with the swing consistently going up through the impact zone rather than being parallel and then forward. I chose to ask Lou to simply eliminate step number five. Because step the number one. Or, excuse me, step, yeah, number, step, like, oh, yes, step number one of his five step and go to four. The reason I had him do that was it's already tough enough to worry about lowering your backswing and trying to fix your timing and one piece of your game. If I was to also say, hey Lou, now what I want you to do is I want you to make sure that steps one and two are a little bit quicker, it could actually hurt them. I don't want you thinking about too many things at once. Well, yeah, so, going to four steps eliminates one, one step of the process. And with, with him, the elimination of that first step fixes all the issues that I would have addressed by keeping that step there, at least for now, in order to try and get your timing back to what, what it was. No, I, That felt so good. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you said it first, because I was about that, to say that's your new best shot. Of the yeah, day. that felt, all right, so again, lower swing, everything going forward here. Let's, let's. Very good, Lou. Really good. That felt really good. Really good. All right, so as we wound down the end of this video, I'm just gonna be trying to repeat a couple really good shots before we end. And then we'll talk a little bit more at the desk. Yeah. All right, last shot of the video here. And we'll go back to the desk and kind of recap everything we worked on. Yeah. And the six chops of 10. All right, so we're done with this lesson. And if someone would have told me this morning, that at the end of this lesson, I'd be throwing four steps. I, I could not believe it, but can't deny. The timing looked better. The tempo looked better. The hitch in my backswing was all but gone. My ball speed was up there. There's so many positive things that I took from this lesson. And it, it kind of showed me what I can be. So it, it's, all, it's always easier when you simplify everything. Again, just like any other sport, the main, the main thing we're looking for is consistency in everything that we do. We want every body part to be working together. When we started today, your arm swing and push away was fighting the speed of your first two feet, which was in turn throwing off your pivot step. And that even though you have such an elongated flat spot, you were forcing yourself to be in such a crunch position at the foul line. So very simply, all we did today was I gave Lou a visual, like an imaginary brick wall that's, that's at his shoulder, number one. And number two, I tried to get him to speed up his feet and get that swing earlier by eliminating that first step, which was causing the beginning of the issues, which, which 
in turn ended as they were. So I'd say for you know the 30 or 40 shots that were thrown today on your first day out, this is something good for you to take into league tonight. And oh, then from yeah. here we can, uh, we can continue. Um, obviously, we work on something every day in the bowling world. Nothing is ever perfect. It's always a different, always a different variable. Something is always changing. But as long as we have the idea and we're aware of the issues that are in front of us, it's always easy to correct it. And for, for I hope that you, you got as much out of this lesson as I did. You know? I, I, yeah, I definitely did. And one big thing is that a lot of, I see a lot of comments that people say that they throw the ball like me, similar styles, because at the end of the day, I'm not a professional, I'm just an amateur. So if you are going through some of the same struggles that I've been going through, really go back and look at this video and look at all the stuff that we're talking about, all the key points that Johnny's talking about, because this guy, I mean, he comes from a lineage of, of bowlers. And thank you right. very much. So I do want to say, Johnny, thank you so much for doing this. Um, there's also, so Johnny has a podcast, which I just found out about today, <clears throat> that I just found out about today, called Straight Up Five. And it's Johnny being raw and uncut, talking about bowling, life, fitness, you said? Yeah, right? we, we dive into, uh, we'll typically talk about the most recent PBA show, junior shows, anything that's really going on in the bowling world. Uh, a lot of times it, it does feed into more um, life lessons, things along those lines, things we're all, me and my two buddies are experiencing in life. but. In general, it's a very, very informative show. We've got some good guests on there. We've got about 20 to 22 episodes thus far. We record as of, every, as uh, of the time of recording, yeah. And as of right now, we, we record on Wednesdays, but I believe we're gonna start going live uh, starting in two weeks. So be sure to check it out. Uh, Lou will post yeah. the uh, link in the description. Yeah, there'll be, a, there'll be a link in the description. The one thing I know from this man is that he's a good person. And all my experiences with this guy has been nothing but positive. So if, if that's why I chose to take a lesson with him. That's why I'm choosing to promote his Straight Up 5 podcast. So do yourself a favor, check it out. I'm definitely going to check it out because I love consuming any kind of bowling content. So click over Johnny's face over here to watch one of my other videos. Click over here somewhere to subscribe. Till next time. Till next time. Sign him out. Done, son.